Hello everyone. So today's video is going to talk about uh, gastritis and an organism Helicobacter pylori, which is very close to my heart because uh, it was my thesis topic. So let's begin with gastritis. Uh, gastritis, uh, how is it defined? It is defined as the inflammation of the mucosa of stomach. Now it has been classified at various times according to various systems. It started with uh, Stickland and Mackey in 1973. Then it was modified in 1975, then followed by other classifications by Watt and Dixon in 1988, then the Sydney system in 1990, which was updated again in 1994. Now we will uh, stick to a simpli simplified version of classification, which was given by Stickland and Mackey and further modified in 1975. Now what does this classification uh, tell us? Basically, gastritis is divided into two uh, main headings, the acute erosive gastritis and the chronic atrophic one. Then the chronic atrophic gastritis is again divided into type A, type B and type AB, which is actually a combination of both type A and type B. Now, what is this acute erosive gastritis? Acute erosive gastritis is caused by mainly these factors like intake of uh, NSAIDs, then cigarette smoking, heavy alcohol intake, uh, then in case of severe burns, which is called curling ulcer, and it is characterized by multiple gastric erosion, erosions in the gastric mucosa not extending beyond the muscularis mucosa. Now here again, I would like to point out that when these lesions, they extend beyond the muscularis mucosa, they are called ulcers. But when the lesions are restricted up to the muscularis mucosa, they are called erosions. So that is the difference between an erosion and an ulcer. Now how, coming to chronic gastritis, how does type A and type B differ from each other? Now type A, now A for autoimmune. So the etiology in type A is autoimmune and type B for your um, convenience, it is easier for remember, easier to remember B for bacterial. So it is not autoimmune and which bacteria is implicated here? It is Helicobacter pylori. So it is Helicobacter pylori mediated gastritis. So B for bacterial and the bacteria is Helicobacter pylori. So type, type A, it is autoimmune in nature and these autoantibodies are responsible for immunological destruction of parietal cells. And these patients in type A gastritis, they develop features of megaloblastic anemia. And on the other hand, type B gastritis, the patients are, uh, these patients, they are uh, associated with gastrodurnal ulcers, gastric adenocarcinoma and maltoma. Now, even in patients uh, of type A gastritis, sometimes um, features of gastric adenocarcinoma may develop. Now this organism Helicobacter pylori is very important uh, for you all to understand because it is very important uh, uh, from the from your theoretical point of view as well as from the practical point of view from uh, uh, even in your clinical practice it is it would be very important for you all to know. Now what is this organism? It is a non-sporing curvilinear gram negative bacilli with unipolar flagella. So this is how it looks like. So if you look at the picture, you see it is curvilinear in shape and it has flagella at one end. So it is unipolar. Uh, so it has unipolar flagella. So who, who were the men behind uh, discovery of this uh, bacillus? These were the men and they were Robin Warren and Barry Marshall. Now Barry Marshall actually he is famous for his uh, experiment. Uh, he actually uh, drank cultures of Helicobacter pylori to prove that these cultures could induce gastritis in the um, in the stomach. So actually he did it on the he performed the experiment on himself to prove that actually these organisms are responsible for development of gastritis and. I have um, ultimately they um, got Nobel Prize for that. So what are the pathogenetic traits of um, Helicobacter pylori? So firstly, the flagella. 
the motility via flagella which allows it to swim through the viscid mucus then this important enzyme urease so this organism it elaborates an enzyme called urease now which splits the urea which we uh, get from food so it will split the urea into ammonia and carbon dioxide now this ammonia will create an alkaline environment in and around the bacteria so that it will neutralize the gastric acidity in and around the bacteria and will help the bacteria survive in the gastric acid environment then it will also uh, express some bacterial adhesins which will help it to bind to the blood group o bearing cells that is why <clears throat> people who have who are of blood group o are more prone to uh, h pylori gastritis and express, expression of certain toxins like cytotoxin as associated gene a which is also called cag a and vacuolating cytotoxin a which is also called vac a now if you look at this picture on the right you see this is the um, bacteria at the center and um, at the top if you can see this urease enzyme is elaborated which splits or hydrolyzes urea nh2co nh2 is its, is its chemical formula it hydrolyzes urea to ammonia and carbon dioxide ammonia it neutralizes the acid ph of the stomach and helps the bacteria to survive in the gastric acidity then this flagella it helps it to swim in the viscid mucus of the gastric um, environment then this cag a or cytotoxin associated gene a what it does it causes cytoskeletal rearrangement of the gastric epithelial cells and also causes alteration of the tight cellular junctions and what does this vac a do it causes as as the name suggests vacuolating cytotoxin it will form vacuoles in the cells and ultimately induce apoptosis so this is how it causes cell death gastric epithelial cell death so this is how the h pylori um, causes damage to the gastric epithelial cells with the help of its cytotoxins cag a and vac a now very commonly you would be asked in your viva what are the diseases caused by helicobacter pylori so these are the common diseases that are caused by helicobacter pylori chronic atrophic gastritis as i have already mentioned then they they also cause peptic ulcers then it is one of the primary reason for gastric carcinoma and also gastric lymphoma most commonly maltoma or mucosa associated uh, lymphoid tissue uh, lymphoma coming to diagnosis of helicobacter pylori which is very important now you have certain tests to diagnose helicobacter pylori and these tests are divided into invasive methods and non invasive methods now what are the invasive methods you can do an endoscopy followed by a rapid urease test and then you can also do gastric biopsy followed by histopathology and in histopathology you can actually apply certain stains stains uh, special stains to demonstrate helicobacter pylori i'll come to the stains that are used to demonstrate helicobacter pylori and then you can also do some non -inve non invasive tests like urea breath test serological tests for igg and iga you can test these antibodies to the organism in the blood and also you can detect um, antigen of this organism in the stool by polymerase chain reaction now when in in a gastric biopsy if you look uh, look at it under the microscope where how do how do the organism look like and where would you find the organism the organism is easily identified concentrated in the superficial muc mucus overlying the gas gastric epithelium so you would um, have to look at the superficial mucus layer of the gastric epithelium to find the organism so you have to know where to look for the orga organism so it always prefers the gastric epithelium and mainly the antrum and you have to remember that it does not colonize the duodenal epithelium and it does not also colonize gastric epithelium which shows evidence of intestinal metaplasia 
So coming to the stains that are used to demonstrate Helicobacter pylori. Now the commonly used stain hematoxylin in use in for uh, histopathology can also sometimes uh, demonstrate Helicobacter pylori. But other than uh, hematoxylin and eosin, the stains that are used are modified gemsa, silver stains like Watkins starry, chrysyl violet, gimenez stain, fluorescent stains like acridin orange, brown hop stain, and nowadays even immunohistochemistry using commercially available antibodies you can use to demonstrate Helicobacter pylori. Now as I told you that rapid urease test. Now what is this rapid urease test? Now this is uh, one of the kits to um, do this rapid urease test and this is this was one which I had used for my thesis. Now uh, this um, now at the bottom if you see this is a negative test. Now what you do is you take a punch biopsy from uh, the gastric mucosa and uh, just crush the tissue and put it in this yellow part of the uh, kit. Now this yellow part is nothing but a uh, this media, it's a medium con containing uh, urea. Now if the biopsy tissue contains Helicobacter pylori, so that Helicobacter pylori will elaborate urease so that urease will split the urea which is there present in this medium and it will release what ammonia now that ammonia will be alkaline so this when, when ammonia is produced it will change the ph of this medium from acidic to alkaline and as a result there will be change in color because of an indicator which is present in this medium and the color will change to this pink color and as you can see here the interpretation is given here red for positive and blue uh, I mean sorry yellow for uh, negative so if there is presence of helicobacter pylori in the punch biopsy after you put the punch biopsy here in the medium the color of the medium will change from yellow to pink after two three minutes of putting the biopsy so that is a positive rapid urease test and that is how you get a quick uh, interpretation of whether H. pylori is present in the gastric mucosal biopsy or not. Then as I told you in modified gymsa stain under microscope you see in the superficial mucus layer you see these uh, small microorganisms if you can um, appreciate these arrows here there are small um, uh, I mean aggregation of uh, bacilli in the superficial mucus layer which have taken this blue color stain in modified gymsa stain. Now morphology of this helicobacter pylori induced gastritis there are some characteristic features the features are although it is a chronic type of gastritis the inflammatory infiltrate is mainly neutrophils and which is predominantly seen in the lamina propria and that is the reason we call this gastritis chronic active gastritis these neutrophils may also occupy gastric pits forming pit abscesses along with neutrophils you may you will also get intraepithelial plasma cells and then you also get lymphoid aggregates with germinal centers and these are nothing but induced form of mucosa associated lymphoid tissue that has potential to transform into lymphoma or multoma. Now some uh, summary to differentiate between type A and type B gastritis is the uh, location of type A is mainly body and type B is in antrum. Inflammatory infiltrate in type A is lymphocytes, in type B it is neutrophils. Acid production is decreased in type A and in type B it is increased. Other lesions you may find neuroendocrine hypoplasia in type A and in type B, type B you get inflammatory polyps. Serology, you get antibodies to parietal cells because it is autoimmune and here you get antibodies to helicobacter pylori. Consequences would be in type A you get pernicious anemia and in type B you get peptic ulcer or adenocarcinoma of the stomach. So that is all about gastritis and helicobacter pylori. If you get a chance you can go through this book of mine which is available in Amazon. Thank you for your attention. Any doubts, any queries uh, I would love to take it in the comment section. 
Thank you, everyone.